Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we'll be talking about the Bitcoin price chart, the altcoin market, and the stock market after yesterday's crazy action with the Federal Reserve. Of course, as I'm sure most of the people who watch this YouTube channel know, XRP is having a good morning right now. Are we already seeing our sign of strength coming out of Wyckoff accumulation? Starting to look optimistic that it is. We'll cover that in another video on its own. Just give it a dedicated XRP video, hopefully later today. But I wanted to briefly cover what's going on here with Bitcoin and what's going on with the stock market, in particular, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I wrote a 13-part thread about it over here on Twitter last night. Many of you are very familiar with this, but I wanted to reiterate it again. As we did not see any type of big rise come off of the Federal Reserve meeting yesterday in the announcement of the 75 basis point rate hike. Matter of fact, rather than rallying like we have previously, the Dow Jones tanked 522 points, getting much closer to that low that was set back there in June. And in that thread, I reiterated the importance of why this level is a must-hold level that we have right here. And that I think a lot of people are focusing on the Fed and that they're going to be raising rates for the next six months. And then once they're all done, then we return back to normal. They've got to turn on the printing machines and then we continue on our bubble rally and keep on going. But the point of the thread that I made in here is that I do not believe that the Dow Jones can go any lower than it did back in June without causing catastrophic decade plus long problems to where the top of the stock market is already in and we have officially popped the US bubble and we won't see anything of the sorts of any type of money printers turning back on. So a lot of fundamental readers out there saying, you know, they'll turn the printers back on in six months or, or whatnot and then everything returns back to normal. Nope, I don't think so. I think if we go below where we're at right now on the Dow Jones, the problems for the decades ahead have just begun. I've shown bubble structures before and really throughout the time of having my YouTube channel, we're all very familiar with the double tap, back test, bull flag, breakout, violent back test, V bottom into the bull flag, breakout. And that we've even looked at Ethereum to show that's exactly how ending bubble structures happen where you have a double tap on top of the all time high, breakout, violent back test with a V bottom, breakout into new all time highs then that's the end of it, right? When bubbles have popped, we typically see continuations of upper bound resistances turning into supports to continue bubble structures to keep on going. Should we break down in the Dow Jones, which we could see over here on Bitcoin from back in 2017, as it had its double tap on top of the all time high, bull flag breakout, violent back test, V bottom, when it did have this big ABC correction, still able to maintain and then continue the parabolic state up for even more waves after that. But still maintaining a parabola and quickly continuing to set higher highs, higher lows and not taking out any of the support levels in here in any type of back test. Everything keeps getting higher and higher and higher until the parabola actually breaks. We will lose that structure. We will lose the 200 week moving average and the technical damage to the chart if the Dow Jones takes out the June low. Just look at the time structure of all of it. It's decades of down. So everybody is trying to read what's happening here in the next six to 12 months and saying we have to go lower because of what's gonna happen in the next six to 12 months. But I don't think paying attention to the actual bubble structure that's happening in the Dow Jones, that if you go lower, if you break below that 200 week moving average, break below the February of 2020 highs, it likely signifies the US stock market has popped for good. And all of that happens at the Dow Jones at 29,500. You crack through there, lights out. And it's one thing to just look at ending structures, but if you don't know this too, when you compare this to the roaring 20s before the Great Depression happened in the 1930s, we had the roaring 20s that ran up we only came up 11% shy of how high that bubble went. So the bubble that we've printed ever since the great financial crisis is super close to as big as the bubble was before the Great Depression actually began. A lot of people want to think, oh, we're just going to do something similar to what the great financial crisis did, and then they'll turn the printers on and we'll keep on rocking. I do not believe that to be the case. I believe there's a lot of leverage built up in the system. I think we're going to flush it out and break things if we go below 29,500. One interesting thing as well is that you say, okay, well, 
Are we even in a similar phase to something like this right here for the Dow Jones? And ever since the Great Depression, the last 90 years, we can zoom out on this thing to take a look at it to see how it's played out and how high and what the structure has looked like for the Dow Jones. And hey, let's do the same thing over here to see what happened here. Oh boy, it's the same. Coming off of our lows, our first big accumulation, our big accumulation, then we have our really big accumulation up here at the top. And then what do you do? You go on for your final waves with the exact structure. Double tap on top of the all-time high, double tap on top of the all-time high, breakout, violent backtest, V bottom, breakout, violent backtest, V bottom. So the point I'm making here is to say, anybody think that we're going to be breaking down, I hope you're under the guise that you're preparing for Great Depression. You're preparing for massive catastrophic fall, not just a wait for the Fed to turn the printers back on, but what you're really looking at is over the course of the next several years, working your way all the way back down to, you know, a 12, 13,000 price Dow Jones Industrial Average. Maybe you get lucky and get a bounce and then you head on and break down below the great financial crisis. <laughs> That's the structure that we have set up in here should we take out 29,500? And I've got people asking me all the time, well, what about the Fed? What about the Fed? What about the Fed? The Fed is a short-term thing. You know, what they're talking about here, this is all short-term. And the people interpreting it, trying to say three, six months, 12 months, whatever, that's short-term. We're looking at structure for, that's, that's 100 years on the Dow Jones. The last run-up's been for 12 years. We're talking, if you take out June, it signifies the whole thing's over. The 90-year run is over over. <laughs> so we could sit there and try to nitpick the, the Fed for the last months or you know the next six months or whatnot. But I'm more looking at that bigger picture. I'm saying to myself, I don't care what the Fed is saying, because this price level has to hold either it's holding none of the what the Fed is saying is is of concern to me, or the Fed is lying, they have no ability to stop inflation, the raising of the interest rates has absolutely nothing to do with fighting inflation, and it's 100% having to do with the fact that the bubble has already popped in the US stock market, and they've got no ammunition to be able to try to slow it down as it collapses, and they're merely just raising rates as fast as they possibly can, so that when the steam really picks up in the stock market, they can try to slow it down but that they're not even fighting inflation. They don't care about inflation. It's all a lie. And this is really just raising interest rates in an attempt to try to slow down the collapse that comes later. Or retail is getting tricked. Everybody thinks that they're a FOMC, Federal Reserve narrative reader. And the reality is it's just going to hold. The bubble is going to continue and we're not going to set a new low. But it's very clear as day here. Either we hold here, the bubble continues, the parabola continues, or we break and the whole thing's done. And with us being this close to it, it's definitely something I'm keeping my eyes on at all times. Now, what would give any type of precedent to say, hey, it's possible that the bottom has happened, already come in, right? We know that Bitcoin was incepted right here. It started right at the bottom of the great financial crisis and has had the luxury of only existing in the ride up for the Dow Jones. Each time the Dow has stopped, Bitcoin went into a bear market. Right here, 2014, bear market for Bitcoin through 2015 and 16. Right here, here's your 2017 bull run, bear market all the way through C19. Boom, here's your 2020, 2021 bull run, bear market ever since then. But here we are at this phase right now, and Bitcoin has mimicked all of the exact same behaviors it has during past bear markets fumbled on my words there, to signify the bottom is already in, whether it comes to capitulation fractals, when it comes to 100 week and 50 week moving average crosses, we're at interesting Fibonacci retracement levels, we're at the previous all time high on the market cap, we've hit oversold RSI, we've done, we've mirrored the fear and greed index, everything here has signified this is the bottom of Bitcoin. And for that, like I've said all week, I just made my final entries into Bitcoin yesterday at 18,300. I'm fully in. I've got my full position on Bitcoin, but should it take out the June lows? I'll let go of it for 5% loss. I'm out. I'll sell it. 
because that will not match anything that's ever happened where the bottom had already come in by the time the 50 week and 100 week moving average has crossed. The bottom had already come in by the time the fear and greed came out of extreme, super extreme fear levels. And the bottom had already come in based on fractals and based on oversold weekly RSI. So everything mirrors what happens when bottoms already come in on Bitcoin saying, hey, this thing's not going to break. But should it break, it will mean things are different. It will mean none of this stuff matters anymore for Bitcoin. And we have no precedent to know how Bitcoin will behave if the Dow Jones bubble has actually popped, because we've only seen it during the ride up. And we do know every time that it's paused out, Bitcoin stopped too. Bitcoin did not keep going. There's no precedent to say we collapse and Bitcoin does well. Every time the, the Dow is going up, Bitcoin's doing well. Every time the Dow is going down, Bitcoin's doing bad. It happens over and over ever since its inception. So should you take this out? You got everybody sitting there screaming, I'm going to buy twelve to $14,000 Bitcoin and, and off and away we go to start it all over again. I don't think so, man. It's either here, right now, right where we're at, that's the bottom, or it's lights out. So keep your eyes peeled. But if I had to guess, right, and here we go, this is going to sound like a broken record. But if I had to guess, if the top of the Dow really is in, if it really is done, and the most common thing you see is still actually another bounce happening in here. You still see an ABC correction coming off of the top. So, you know, and it, it's hard because you try to wrap your head around it and you say, all right, so after the Fed meeting, what did prices do? Prices tanked, right? What happened in the past Fed meetings, right? Prices rose fast. They went up like 4% after the Fed spoke, but then eventually still rolled over, right? But this time, when the Fed spoke, prices went down. Is everybody fearful? Is, I don't know. But it's a big moment to watch right in here to see how the Dow is going to react at these levels. It cannot afford to go down below these levels. I do not believe. I do not believe we can go below these levels without triggering insolvencies like we saw in crypto we have it, how much of that do you think goes on out there in the real world and in the stock market we saw it happen in the great financial crisis there's tons of insolvencies that happened we've had none here yet so far we haven't reached that moment of that actually occurring yet and so i think all of that would occur should we actually get down below the 200 week moving average and below the february of 2020 high so it's a crazy moment the Fed pretty much came out and said, you know, the, the thing that was interesting about the words coming out of their mouth is they were definitely talking about this whole run and the rise up in the markets as like being a thing of the past. And I thought that was real interesting to hear them kind of reference to having a growth expansion that lasted for 10 years, 12 years, and then kind of referencing like that time period is officially over. And they may be right. They may be right. Like if, if this is the top of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, if we get a rise back up in here on the Dow, back into a 702 Fibonacci retracement, I will open up the biggest short position of my life on the US indexes and on the Dow Jones and, you know, probably just buy 3x reverse ETFs of the Dow Jones. But should we not have any type of bounce come out of here? And should we start breaking down right now? Uh, things will get ugly really, really, really fast. And that would probably be the same story for Bitcoin. So I know there's a lot of people thinking, hey, we're just going to dip right down to here. And then boom, bull run, it's on. But understand the macro picture of what's happening with the Dow Jones does not support that type of situation occurring. All I'm getting at, right? Do your own research. Decide this, if there's any validity to any of the things that I'm pointing out or seeing. I just spend a lot of time in these charts and I try to compact eight to 10 hours of staring at charts and coming up with ideas into a 15 minute video for you guys once a day. <laughs> so up to you. But I'm watching that like a hawk. And... I'm done buying Bitcoin. I've made my complete purchase in here and treating it as if we are in a phase like right here. And should we take out lows? Should we take out lows? I will negate that idea entirely, but that's how I'm treating it. And my entry is done. Quick little check-in again on XRP before I close out this video. Prices are above 42 cents. Exciting, still has some work to do over here. I'll see if I can get another video out later today. It's just going to depend if I have time. I'm having to really practice my drums a lot because I have to play in front of people this weekend. Today is my last, quote, band practice that I have today. And then I've got to play in front of an, <laughs> play in front of an audience. A little nervous about that. 
and that's coming up in just two days from right now. So we'll see if I have time for it today, but I'm definitely watching XRP like a hawk. And if I have time, I'll try to get another video out just on that topic today. But all right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Watching the stock market. It's hovering back down there near those lows, looking for 29,500 to hold. But all right, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.